Hi there, Malcolm here with my 120th booktube video. And Sabrina here, just butting in. Now, ordinarily, I read a chapter of a book to Sabrina, uh, who quite often falls asleep while I'm doing so. But if she does stay awake for it, then that's great. Uh, once Zach I there, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, once I finish that chapter, I'll put the book away, say goodnight to her, and get my book out. Now, if she's still awake, which can happen from time to time, I'll read aloud so she drops off to my dulcet tones. He's pretty good, actually. Unfortunately for this book, she didn't. And I ended up reading the whole damn thing to her. So I'm counting it as a book I've read this month. <laughs> Yay me! <laughs> so I read this to myself, but um, she listened in as well. Yeah. <coughs> Hence the collab video. <laughs> <laughs> so Firefly... The Ghost Machine, book four of the Firefly novel series by James Lovegrove, and the third one published, just to be really confusing. So there's a publication pushback for the third one, which is Generations, written by Tim Lebon. Yeah. But this book is technically the third book in the series, because fourth it was published. Book. Yeah, it's the fourth book officially, but it's the third book published. That wasn't confusing at all, was <laughs> it? If you understood my logic there, well done. But it doesn't really matter too much. They're all pretty much standalones. Uh, they're set between the TV series and the film, roughly. And this one is certainly set more near the film than it is the TV series, in that Book and Inara have left the ship for the time being. Inara's gone to that planet where she's training up other companions, and Book's gone to do his... Haven. Sh He's on Haven. He I remember that. <coughs> uh, yeah. And Book's gone to Haven, thank you, <laughs> to do some shepherding there. He's, yeah. found, he's finding life on Serenity a little bit too... Contradictory to his moral guidelines that he's trying to follow. Yeah, and also he's afraid of his dark past coming to the surface. Yeah. Um, so, needless to say, relationships between the remaining crew is a little bit... Dicey. Yeah, yeah, friendships and that are strained. Various members of the crew are feeling like they want to move on themselves, that something has been lost yeah. since Inara in particular have left. Yeah, particularly because Mal's wandering around all grumpy guts. He, he always was a moody bugger, but he's even worse now. He's now Captain Grumpy Pants. Yeah, you get those tight buttocks, people. Anyway, the story starts off with Mal, Zoe and Jane going to pick up a MacGuffin in the middle of a desert somewhere for Badger. As usual, harsh words are spoken, as are bullets. Bullets are exchanged. <laughs> the main reason for that is Mal decides he doesn't actually want this particular device on his ship. He's it's, got a bad feeling about this. It was constructed by Blue Sun and he doesn't want anything to do with anything by them and has refused to take this particular piece of merchandise. Obviously the guys who's supposed to be taking this off aren't too happy with that because, you know, uh, Alliance ships are around this planet and they're looking for any stuff that's, you know, shouldn't be out of various hands hmm. uh, and they want this thing gone and Mal's just like no I ain't taking it Sodger I'm off and Badger's very keen because he's working for Nishka to get hold of this particular kit those of you that watch the series you know Nishka yeah we don't mess with him so there's a lot riding on this but Mal's added went no I don't want it anyway he and Zoe return Jane says hang on we got a job this is worth money we need money well if you can bring it back to the ship then we'll take it Guess what he does? Jane brings it back to the ship and sneaks it on board. And it just so happens this is a ghost machine, which during the altercation and the refusing to take it, it gets nudged and turned on. And the ghost machine, it turns out, is able to project the perfect dream to those around it. And as Jane is trudging back to the ship with it, he starts seeing his mum and brother around the place, which he thinks is a bit weird, but he's got some stroke and... Yeah, he's a bit dehydrated, you know, it's a perfectly logical explanation for this. But he gets it to the ship and hides it and then goes to the infirmary for severe sunstroke. Need to say, River is highly aware of this thing going off and attempts to inform Mal that there's something majorly wrong before actually the machine completely overwhelms her and she ends up screaming. You know, think typical River the world is too much and she just screams at it yeah. mode so she's given a sedative by her darling brother simon thinking he's doing the best for her so what ensues then is the entire crew subjected to a dream sequence event and this is a dream secret story if you don't like them you're not going to like this book however i love that kind of thing which is probably why i stayed awake to listen to it mm. i love what ifs 
dream episodes and just seeing the potential possibilities of characters. I love those kind of stories. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of dream sequences. I find a lot of them just, well, what was the point of that? But as was already mentioned, it is a what if. And you get to learn more about these characters, what are their hopes, what are their dreams. And certainly when you're having people like Mal and particularly Wash and Zoe having their dreams and hopes for the future, who else features in these dreams is really, really interesting. And um, of course, the big twist in this is these perfect dreams very soon turn into nightmares. That would be the little problem with the technology. It didn't quite go to plan. Oh, and as usual, you know who's behind all this as well. So what follows is a nightmare sequence of events. Again, dream sequences. Each of the um, characters go through their worst nightmares. And um, it gets pretty horrific at times, but then the show didn't scrimp away from quite rather grisly scenes. Yeah, the only reason you don't see it all on screen is because they turn the lights off for most of it. So, you know, just imagine what the Reaver episode would look like with full-blown Doctor Who lighting on it. Oh, yes. Gore and guts everywhere, people. So, those going, this is a bit grim and gory, so is the show. So, Zoe does have a pretty bum deal. And we're talking full-blown torture scene here. Yeah. Don't, don't, eyeballs, eyeballs, people. Yeah, if you have any eyeball issues, then... Yeah. That... Oh, <laughs> gross. Yeah. And uh, Jane also has a pretty hard time with what happens to his brother. I'm never going to look at a campfire in the same light ever, ever again. Just, ugh. Obviously, Reavers, Reavers. appear. Um, they're, they're not too bad. I mean, no. it's implied a lot it's of it. It's a lot of that. I think the worst nightmares, really, though, are sort of Simon's and Walsh's in particular. Mm. I think they were far more disturbing what their own minds could do to themselves. Yeah, so there's nothing particularly grisly happens in, in the gore style, no, but it's more it's, emotional it's psychologically and psychological. Quite rough. Yeah, yeah. Certainly, Walsh's character is shown. I mean, Alan Tudyk does a great job on screen of kind of highlighting some of Walsh's insecurities and all that. But certainly, the Ghost Machine fully fleshes out those insecurities, and seeing his dream turn into a nightmare. You really see the character of Walsh that if you only knew him as the dinosaur-loving pilot, you wouldn't actually get that there was this person underneath absolutely terrified. Yeah, and there's one thing he's particularly terrified of. I mean, it wouldn't take too much of a guess to guess what it is, but uh, yeah, it's really interesting yeah. what his big fear is. Um, so yeah, you get to learn all about all these characters. Obviously, we don't learn about Book much. I mean, he does feature as one of the characters in the dream. Yeah, we're not going to spoil that one, though. Um, obviously, it's not his actual character from no. before. I mean, it's, it's But it, a... it's interesting how that character portrays someone that she's known already from Serenity mm. and why they believe that that person fits in into their dream sequence. Yeah. That's really interesting and very telling. Yeah, certainly because there are hints of his darker past and, of course, it plays off of that. So that's a really interesting one. And obviously Inara is naturally linked to Mel's dream. Yeah, so it's not really a spoiler, that one. No. Um, but yeah, really interesting how that one plays out. Because um, the non, the NPC, if you like, characters in these dreams are fully fleshed out and believable um, person personas of the actual characters. And certainly when they're dreaming about the other characters who are also in the dream, they're dreaming, of, you know, it's an NPC version of that character they're dreaming about. But based on their own memories and everything that mm. they know about the personality, I think that's how the writer gets around this whole idea that, you know, surely they would know it's a dream. And it's like, well, do you know you're dreaming? How do you know you're awake? I mean, it's, it's that classic yeah. question, you know, do, is the frog, you know, the frog that dreamt he was a man and he wakes up and it's like, hold on, am I a man dreaming? Am I a frog? Or was I a frog that dreamt I was a man? And that's what the ghost machine plays with because it's using each individuals own memories and knowledge of those people that they've met they flesh out completely the dream for them so that they can't escape from it and then finally the whole ship serenity is going to crash into a moon very very soon like you do like you do and it's down to river the heavily sedated river who's not firing on all cylinders at the best of times anyway to save the day and it's quite cool seeing river i, I, I don't want to spoil it 
but it's really cool seeing how River fits Uninhibited. in. Uninhibited. Yeah. Because of the way that River is as a character, she is a person that's trapped inside her own mind. She knows what she wants to do and all that, but because of the trauma she has suffered, hmm. she cannot get out. Whereas in dream sequences, that's not a problem. In a dream sequence, you can be whatever you need to be. And for River, it means she's no longer traumatised by her past. She is no longer controlled by that The frailty that of her body. Yeah, you know, she is free to be that person that she is, yeah. which is very cool, and I really did like it. Obviously, they get out of it because... Yeah, the film happens. The film happens, so it's not much of a spoiler in that case, but no, it's really interesting to see how it happens and, yeah, just learning about these characters a bit more because, uh, yeah, the show was woefully short it's nice revisiting them and finding out just more about them and what they liked and didn't like and what they hoped for and feared for yeah absolutely loved it of the three i would rank this i think in a second favorite i mean obviously i've only read the first book big damn heroes i haven't read magnificent, magnificent nine. nine yet but you really like that yeah, i think magnificent nine is my favorite one uh this one's next and big damn hero really good still but in third place um, yeah. yeah, it's a good score for it to play. I mean, still. James Lovegrove is a pretty damn good writer. I've read a lot of his Sherlock Holmes stuff. He really sort of takes things where you don't expect him to go, and I quite like that about his writing. Uh, he's also very good at capturing characters. So we were talking about this the other day. We'd watched a review by someone who just started reading these books, and I said, these books are not for people who haven't watched and enjoyed the show. Hmm. Because... These characters, it is presumed you know them. Um, you know how they behave, how they act. And, you know, a lot of that is not on the page because obviously if you're going to pick up a Firefly book, it's because you like Firefly. And so I would say if you've not seen Firefly, you're probably not going to enjoy these books. Near as much, no. Nowhere near as much because you've lost a lot of the connection that's been built up over, what, 11 episodes? Mm. Is it that? Oh, right. um, film. And the film, and obviously the actor's portrayal. And I think a lot of the love of Firefly is from the actors themselves, which, you know, James Lovegrove has done a great job in capturing those actors in those roles as yeah. characters. But what the ghost machine does is, as Malcolm says, it fleshes out the characters, it gives you the what's ifs, it gives you their fears, their hopes, their dreams, their desires. And that's something that the show perhaps did not get an opportunity to do. No. Um, and certainly it co covers a couple of little incidences regarding Inara in a in a plot point that they forgot, well, that they cut from the show, where she's diagnosed with a cancer and all that little detail. And um, like I said, a book's fear for his past coming up to, to haunt him, which is the main reason why they both left, whereas in the film it's just that they've already left, there's no reason for it, and the cancer's being dealt with and... Books obviously on, on Haven now doing whatever he's doing. It, it addressed it. It didn't really deal, it, deal with it very much, but it just mentioned it, that these were the things and off it went. Uh, so have you read this one? Have you read any Firefly books? Which one's your favourite if you have? I'd love to know. Or what's your favourite Firefly episode? Uh, I think I'd go for um, Out of Gas is yeah. my favourite episode. That's pretty oh, awesome. I like the one a lot. That's, that's one of my faves. Mm. I like... Um... The Messenger as well, but it kind of breaks my heart a lot. That gets you in the fears quite I a bit. I know. It doesn't take much, but I like that one. And Bushwhack's pretty awesome. Yeah, I have to watch that with the lights on. <laughs> mm. So, I'd love to know. So, comments down below, please. But as usual, if you have nothing nice to say, then please keep it yourself. Thank you, and until next time, see you later. Bye.